Today is the third Sunday of the Great Land, and as we heard, the Gospel is talking about you know, the prodigal son, very famous Gospel. Um, the story of this prodigal son and his brother and the compassionate father. Um, he said, I will arise and go to my father. Sometimes when we read this parable, we're talking about you know, the whole thing about the prodigal son, about the younger son, but also there is very important parts of it with the compassionate father, which is a symbol of our heavenly father. If you look at this parable, we'll find the difference between someone is living outside the house, someone is living inside the house, someone is living in the church and God's house and someone is outside. When the young son was leaving the house, he thought that he will have freedom. He will actually seeking bondage. But when he returned back to his father's house, this when he found actual freedom. And that's what St. Paul was saying in the epistle to the Galician. He said, stand fast therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made for us, has made us free and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Let us just you know, contemplate you know, with the three stations we have today outside the father's house, inside the father's house, and his return. So the first station, inside the father's house, or in the father's house. The younger son knew that there are certain principles in his father's house. There are firm boundaries. There are things he can do and others he cannot. And that's why he was thinking let me get out of this house so that I don't have any boundaries. I will have more freedom in his sight. And also we notice in the father's house, all the needs of that son were provided for. Everything he asked for was given to him. He was not missing anything, but he wasted something in excess. If you think about the father's financial status, he was very wealthy. And you can know that because when the son left the house, he asked it of half of his you know, uh, positions. He got all his inheritance, which is almost half what the father has. Also that you know, father having too many hired servants in his house. And even when the son came back to his house, okay, he accepted him as a son and was worthy of inheritance. So this father have everything, but the son, you know, wants just, you know, to leave the house to get, you know, more freedom in his opinion. He was willingly depriving himself from the security of his father's wealth. And that's what's happening with us sometimes when we are thinking about leaving. We are thinking about, you know, we don't think about what's going to happen afterwards. We just, you know, think about what's happening now. We just want immediate satisfaction. Just, you know, we'll leave and we'll have more, you know, freedom. But actually, we are depriving ourselves from the security of being inside God's house. Sometimes we think that we can leave the church because there's too many rules and too many restrictions inside, you know, the church. But actually, we are getting or finding more bondage when you go outside the church. And that's why the Lord is telling us, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. Just think about heavenly, you know, a place. Just think about, you know, kingdom of God and all these things will be added to us. Also inside the father's house, there is some respect of the son's freedom to choose. The father did not bend his rules. He did not accept evil in his house, but at the same time, give that son the freedom to choose or the freedom to leave. He did not force him to stay. When he asked him that I would like to leave, he did not force him to stay. 
And imagine if your son came to you and said, I'm tired of being in this house and I want to leave and I want my inheritance now. What is the meaning of I want my inheritance now? It's very bad because it means I wish you're dead so that I can take all your money. That's how you know, hurtful and how bad, how rude was this saying from the son to his father. And for the father, I'm sure he was, you know, really surprised and he was like, astonishing saying, I provide you everything, I care for you, okay, I give you everything you ask for, I shelter you, I give you all the support, but instead of all that support and all this money, he still wants to leave, you know, the house. And despite that, the, the, the father humbled himself and he granted you know, his, his son's request and let him go. He respect his freedom. And that's exactly what God is doing with us. God in his humility and in his love, he give us free will. He give us the free will even to disobey him. And he did not force anyone to stay or force anyone to be with him unless he wants to do so, to do so. He wants, you know, he give us the freedom to choose. He give us a free will, okay, to be with him. And if we leave the house, if we leave the church, if we leave God's path, it's our choice, it's our bad choice. But God does not force himself on us. In the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 30, it said, I have said before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. قد جعلت قدامك الحياة والموت البركة واللعنة فاختار الحياة لتحيا أنت ونسلك. Also, St. James is saying, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. اقتربوا إلى الله فيقترب إليكم. God wants everyone to be saved, but he does not force us to do so. He loves us, and he was incarnate in order to save us. After Adam sinned, and we have the penalty of death, and our nature was corrupted, he was incarnate, he came, he was crucified on the cross, and he gave us, you know, the life. He forgave our sins and restored our state, and also gave us to live with him you know, forever, eternal life, if we follow what, you know, his commandments were. And again and again, I would like to repeat this, you know, thing several times. We said it several times. Revelation 3.20. Remember this one. Behold, I am standing at the door knocking. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. I will dine with him and he with me. God is knocking the door. Okay, we have to hear that voice. We have to open the door. We have to initiate that act of repentance. We have to initiate the act of repentance and through God's grace, okay, and through the Holy Spirit, we will be in the right path and we will be with God. Then go for the second you know, station outside the Father's house. There was no restriction for the younger son. He is now very far from his father's house and he think there is no restrictions. This is the freedom. In his words, this is the freedom or the definition of freedom. If you ask probably some of our kids and ask them what the definition of freedom, they're gonna say, maybe their answer will be, oh, there is no rule, there is no limit. There is no border. I can do whatever I want, whenever I want. So probably that concept, the wrong concept, is this is the actual definition of freedom. But this is not true. This is not true. When this younger son went far away from his father's house, he was thinking to be beyond the protective hand of his father, to be away from the watchful eye of his father. He did not realize that restrictions in his father's house was for his protection, for his benefit, for his
for his sight. Psalm 119, it says, unless your law had been my delight, I would then have perished in my affliction. لو لم تكن شريعتك لذاتي لهلكت حين أزن في مذلتي. When I go away from God's path, I will perish. And this is a job of Satan. This is a job of the enemy. Just try to convince us that outside is better. Just look over there and you're going to find the green grass. But when you come closer, you found it brown. It is not true. It's just deceiving us. He wants us to leave the church in order to be away from God's protection for us. He wants us to sin, to perish, to live in sin, and to die in sin or affliction. This is a job of Satan that we have to be aware of, and we have to be really very careful here. Okay, stay with God's path and his commandments, his words, in order to be saved. Outside the Father's house, there was a promise or false promise of pleasure and happiness. In the book of Proverbs it's 27, it said, A satisfied soul loath the honeycomb, but to a hungry soul every bitter thing is sweet. We know in the Arabic the same thing. The same thing is the same thing, the same thing, and the same thing is the same thing. If I did not get my satisfaction from God, I will be out to the things which are bondage and bitter in order to give me a false satisfaction. So also, the third point in outside the Father's house, there was a conditional acceptance. Acceptance of those outside is conditional. As long as that you know, young man having money, he has friends, he has company, he has parties, he had a lot of fun. But as, lost, as long as you know, he lost, when he lost his money, everybody was away from him. Everybody was away from him. No one gave him an eye. No one even looked at him. They saw him begging. They saw him feeding the swine. They saw him in a dirty cloth. They saw him in a very bad condition. And no one, no one gave him anything, not even a look. And that's what's happening here in this world. Friends of the world are seeking, are looking for someone's you know position someone's money someone's fame someone popularity and when you lose that stuff everybody will be away from you friends of the words are really interested in your positions but friends of the church friends of god are looking and seeking your salvation and that's what St. Paul was telling the Corinthians. You know, St. Paul's service was one of the, the, the amazing, the greatest, you know, for all the apostles and disciples' service. And he was telling the Corinthian people, because he had some difficulty in preaching them, he was telling them what? He was telling them, I will very gladly spend and be spent for your souls. His service was for the salvation and for the save, to save these Corinthians. It's the unconditioned love. It's the love and service in order to save people and to get them through or close to God. Also outside you know, the Father's house, outside God's you know, house, there was humiliation. This, God, this kid was even looking to eat the pods of the swine. And you know that in Jewish tradition, that if someone is touching, you know, um, the swine is touching, you know, the pigs, he is unclean. So he is not even touching, you know, the pigs, but he was living with them. He was feeding them, okay, all the time. That's how bad his situation was. He really wants, to, he desired just to eat the pods which the swine was, you know, eating, but no one gave him anything. And someone said that the longer we stay in hell, the more we became attached to it. The longer we stay with the pigs, we are more attached to it. I was thinking if this son stayed longer 
with the pigs feeding the swine, probably he would not have been able to come back to his father's house. And the last point here is the isolation. No one even looked at him. Just you know, think of this, no one even gave him an eye. No one even looked at him. They just left him isolated, left him by himself. Okay, and again, this is the act of the devil. Like this is the act of the devil. He would like to isolate us from the church. He would like to isolate us from being with God. From our families, from our community. And let me you know, tell you this. If anything that isolates you from the fellowship of the believers, it is from the enemy. It is from Satan. Okay, sometimes you get temptation that, you know, I would like to go to a church when there is no one there except me and Abuna. I don't think this is a very healthy or very sound way of thinking. We all have to have that fellowship of other believers. We would like to pray together. We would like to go to heaven together. This is what is called the fellowship, the fellowship of the believers, to be all together to help each one, to help each other, in order to continue in the right path of God, in order to be in the kingdom of heaven with God later when we depart from this world. So outside the house, there was no restriction. There was a false promise of happiness. There was a conditional acceptance. There was humiliation and there was isolation. Then the last station when this son came back or returned to his father's house. There was three things in the father's house. Firm boundaries, we said talk about, and uh, his needs were provided. Then the third point was respect of his choice or his freedom. Then we come to the good part. When he came back, when he returned to his father's house, there was forgiveness, there was compassion, there was restoration. We, the gospel is telling us that the father was waiting Okay, and when he saw him from very far, this means probably he was standing on a hill or something, looking and hoping that one day that son will come back, will return. And when he saw him from very far distance, he did not wait for him to come. Okay, he did not even you know, look at his clothes were dirty, he does not look in a good shape. He does not think of, oh, now you came to me, now you know after you lost all your money, that now you came back to me, he never thought of anything like that. He just ran to him, he you know, embraced him, he hugged him, he kissed him, and he restored him. And all of us know the story when the son was telling him, I have sinned okay, against heaven and in front of you, I'm not worthy to be called your son, make me like one of your hired servants. And the story here goes on, and the father did not allow the son to say the last you know, sentence. He interrupted him, he cut him off, he does not want him to say, I'm gonna be one of your hired servants. No, you came back, you returned, you still, you know, my son. He accepted his sonship, and he accepted him back as a son, not as a servant. And, um, Lastly, you know, the thing about, you know, the joy and the happiness. Happiness on the father's, you know, part and also on the community. They told, you know, the servants to kill the fatted, you know, calf and rejoice and be merry. Okay, fatted calf, this means it was a big celebration with too many people, okay, are there. But probably in the father's sight or the father's opinion was different than the community. The father wants this son to come back and he accepted him, he gave him everything back. Okay, puts on him, you know, the, the best robe, put, you know, um, uh, a ring in his, on his finger and sandal on his feet. He gave him everything and he was so joyful. He was rejoicing because of his son's return. But in the community, do you think they were so happy so? They so happy too? I don't think so. I don't think that you know, Jewish community you know, were happy for this return. For them, 
this was a shame. This was a disgrace to the father. This son probably, in their opinion, should have been excommunicated from that Jewish community. But wait, they were rejoicing because of the father, because of the father's generous you know, acceptance of his son, because the whole thing because of the father, because of the father's humility to accept his son back. That's why they were rejoicing with him. The father has to sacrifice his dignity in a humility in order to accept this son and to give him all his right as a son, you know, not as a servant. He made himself, and this is what happened with actually our heavenly father. You know, God made himself with no reputation taking the, the form of a bond servant coming in the likeness of man. Rabbina akhla nafsu akhizan surat abd sa'iran fi shibhi nas in order to save us, in order to save us. Then we're going to come to the last part about the older son. The older son came back from the field and he found some music and some celebration inside the house. He asked one of the servants what's happening there. When they told him that your son came back, the, the gospel said that he was angry. He was angry and would not go in. Can you believe that when his you know, brother came back, instead of being so happy and joyful with the other people, he was angry and would not go in. And not only that, his father, out of his humility and his love, he went outside to meet with this older you know, son and talked to him. He pleaded with him. And very rough and very tough, very rude words from that older son. He said, what? This son of yours, he did not even mention this is, you know, he is my brother. He said, this son of yours, then this son of yours who destroy and wasted all your livelihood, he was living with harlots. It is not even a proof that he was living with harlots. And also he said, this son of yours who left you and took all your money. And here probably the older son here, okay, um, his way of living, he was living inside the house of his father, but probably as one of the servants. He was not living inside the house like a son. All what he was asking for, just to give me a young goat so that I can celebrate with my friends. This is not actual sonship. He was living inside the house of his father, but not as a son, but as a servant. And this is a good lesson for all of us, not to be in the church here to live or to come here as a custom, but to live in the church, to live with God as sons and daughters of God, not just, you know, living and coming, you know, every Sunday or every week. And that was it. And the parable ended without knowing if the son, if the older son, you know, finally went in or not. It did not tell us if he finally, after he spoke with his father, if he went in or not. And this will clearly, the whole parable, the whole story will tell us that outside the church there's no safety, there's no security, but inside the church is different. There's freedom, there's forgiveness. In the Old Testament, you know, the road to heaven was closed. The paradise was closed. But in the New Testament, the heaven is open. The way to the paradise, the paradise is open, and we have to really to live with God. Let us live as sons of God inside our Father's house, okay, and um, to have an actual freedom. And that's what St. Paul is telling us. He said what? For you did not receive the spirit of bondage, but the spirit of adoption, by whom you say, Abba, Father. لأنكم لم تأخذ روح العبودية بل روح إيه التبني الذي به نصرخ يا أبا الأب The grass is not green on the other side believe me it looks green but when you go over there you're going to find it brown stay inside the church with God live with God and today actually we read something very nice in the Pauline epistle St. Paul is telling us in the second Corinthian epistle it in an acceptable time, I have heard you. In the day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold now, at the accepted time, behold now, at the day of salvation. 
هو ذا الان وقت مقبول هو ذا الان وقت خلاص هو ذا الان يوم خلاص and also during the great lent we said a very nice you know what was aspasmus when you said a ana a'rif annaka salih rauf wa rahim askurni bi rahmatik ila abad al abad also for the adam aspasmus we we hope we can chant you know the first two paragraphs of it it's a very very nice you know aspasmus very nice prayer we say during the great lent we said what for you do not desire the death of a sinner but that he returns and his soul may live. Restore us, O God, to your salvation and deal with us according to your goodness. I pray today that all of us will have the actual freedom living with God, will have the forgiveness of our sins, will have compassion, will have restoring, restoration and joy to live with God through the intercessions of Virgin Mary, through the prayers of David the Prophet, and Bakaras, and Babakhomis, through the prayers of Abuna, to whom is the glory forever and ever. Amen.